Thursday, March 20th, 1986. At approximately 5 a.m., two men are observed walking along the off-ramp connecting Interstate 64 with U.S. Route No. 35. One of the two men is observed carrying what appears to be a briefcase. In the pre-dawn darkness, passing motorists have no idea that less than 85 feet away down an embankment, the very life of 27-year-old Linda Sharp was slowly bleeding away into the frozen ground. A little under three hours later, her body was spotted by a passing motorist, and the investigation into her death was begun. An investigation which has now spanned 33 years and remains open and unsolved. Nitro, West Virginia is a town that takes pride in billing itself as a living memorial to World War I. The town is perhaps best known for its manufacture of explosive materials, many of which would eventually find their way onto the bloody battlefields of Europe. However, in March of 1986, it was bloodshed of another, more intimate nature which horrified this small town. Literally within sight of the very factories that gave the town its name, the blood of one of its lifelong residents was violently shed. This feature was filmed with the complete cooperation of the Putnam County Sheriff's Department and, as always, the wonderful staff of the West Virginia State Archives. Linda Sharp was born in Nitro, West Virginia in 1958, the youngest of three daughters born to Edward and Virginia Sharp. Linda's father, Edward, worked for the Postal Service in Charleston and locally ran a television repair service, first in a building near Nitro Elementary School and later out of the ground floor of this residence on Main Avenue. Linda and her family occupied the second level. Most of Linda's life would be one without the presence of her mother, who tragically passed away from a sudden illness in 1969. Linda spent the entirety of her youth in Nitro, attending Nitro High School in the mid-1970s. In December 1980, Linda's life was again struck with tragedy when her father, Edward, died by his own hand in her childhood home where she still resided. As fate had taken her mother when she was only 10 years old, Linda had been particularly close to her father, and his death was an emotional pill to swallow. Deprived of both parents before she was even 23, it was perhaps a foregone conclusion that Linda's adult life would soon drift in an unsavory direction. Eventually, perhaps inevitably, Linda, in the words of her oldest sister Pat, soon got in with the wrong crowd. Around 1984, Linda married Johnny Withrow, also of Nitro, West Virginia. In March of 1985, Linda was sentenced to six months in the Kanawha County Jail for probation violation. According to then Kanawha County Sheriff Danny Jones, Linda was released the following October. Her husband Johnny, however, remained incarcerated, right up to the point that Linda's life was to take one final wrong turn. By March of 1986, Linda was reportedly trying hard to turn her life around, even reaching out to law enforcement officials for help, in addition to taking a job as a caregiver to a bedridden man in Nitro. According to Linda's family and friends, her situation at the time was a precarious one. Rumors have circulated that Linda owed a sizable sum of money to a well-known Nitro businessman, whether or not this alleged debt was directly related to Linda's fate is not known. What is known is that Linda Sharp did not live to see the coming spring. Wednesday, March 19, 1986. 
According to her roommates, Linda may have gone to an area bar in the evening hours. Whatever her actions later in the day on the 19th, authorities later determined that by the early morning hours of Thursday, March 20th, Linda had somehow made her way to what was then a Union 76 auto truck stop at the Winfield exit number 39 along Interstate 64. At the 76 station, Linda was observed in the company of two unidentified males. These unidentified males may have driven to the auto truck stop in a 1985 auto car tractor. This vehicle, similar to those shown here, was reportedly hot-wired and stolen hours earlier from another location about 10 miles away. The tractor was described as a fully loaded double cab with black carpet and a decal containing the words Younger Brothers. The vehicle's owner later reported that it was sufficiently fueled for up to 1,500 miles of travel. Linda was last seen alive at the 76 truck stop at approximately 2 a.m. Witnesses later told police that Linda was observed entering what was described as a battered 1974 four-door Cadillac, which was either red or burgundy in color with a white vinyl roof. Approximately three hours later, the same two men who were seen with Linda at the truck stop were observed walking along the off-ramp of the eastbound St. Albans exit. This stretch of roadway connects Interstate 64 to what was then U.S. Route No. 35, a major trucking route leading north to Point Pleasant, West Virginia, and then into Ohio. One of the men was seen carrying a suitcase belonging to the owner of the stolen auto car tractor. By the time the sun rose over the Kanawha Valley, both the unidentified men, the 1974 Cadillac, and the 1985 auto car were nowhere to be seen. Traffic along the St. Albans exit continued along normally that morning until about 7.45 a.m. It was then that the driver of an 84 lumber delivery truck glanced over the west side embankment from his elevated driver's cab and spied the lifeless body of Linda Sharp. Sharp's body was found some 85 feet down an embankment in an area which could not be seen by anyone driving a standard passenger vehicle. Evidence along the hillside suggested that Linda's body had been dragged from the exit ramp or rolled down the grassy embankment. Linda had been shot twice, once on the left side of her head and once at the base of her neck by what was originally reported only as a large caliber handgun, possibly a 357 Magnum or a 44. No identification was found on Linda's body. This, combined with the heavy damage inflicted by the murder weapon, made identification impossible until fingerprints were later taken. When she was found, Linda was dressed in blue jeans, a black and white baseball jersey, and blue moccasins. Publicly, police stated that they were never 100% certain if Linda was shot where she lay or if she had met her death somewhere else and was then transported to the scene. No bullet slugs were recovered from Linda's body. Although it was never made public, one spent and disfigured slug was found near the guardrail at the top of the embankment along the exit ramp by West Virginia State Trooper Jeff Stevenson. This bullet slug had apparently ricocheted off or bounced off the Armco barrier directly above the area where Sharp's body was found. The slug was later identified as a 44 caliber. This previously unreleased information was confirmed to Mysterious WV by the Putnam County Sheriff's Department. Linda Sharp's body was found here 85 feet down a grassy hillside from the western side of the off-ramp connecting the eastbound lanes of Interstate 64 with what is now West Virginia Route 817. At the time, the secondary route was U.S. Route number 35. The Union 76 auto truck stop, where Sharp was last seen alive, is located here, 
approximately five miles west at the Hurricane Taze Valley exit number 39 and adjacent to its eastbound off-ramp. The location is now a TA travel center. Following the discovery of Linda's body, officials from the Putnam County, West Virginia Sheriff's Department responded to and secured the crime scene. Deputy Sheriff T.W. Gillespie took charge of the murder investigation with State Trooper Jeff Stevenson assisting. Once the crime scene analysis was complete, Sharp's body was removed and taken to the offices of the State Medical Examiner in South Charleston. Positive identification of Linda Sharp was later made by family friend and future Putnam County Magistrate Kyleen Dunlap Brown. It was later determined that Sharp had been shot at approximately 5 a.m. Putnam County Sheriff David Alford later stated that authorities were proceeding on the supposition that Sharp had been shot at or very close to the location where her body was found. According to Sheriff Alford, authorities were at a loss as to a motive for the shooting and set about trying to gather as much information as they could, and quickly. A male friend of Linda's was questioned the night following the discovery of her body. He voluntarily took and passed a polygraph test and was soon eliminated as a suspect. The following morning, the Putnam County Sheriff's Department established a checkpoint along I-64 so motorists could be stopped and questioned concerning any unusual events they may have seen the previous day. No witnesses to the actual shooting were ever found. The investigation into Sharp's background soon led authorities to believe that an unpaid debt involving narcotics may have been a motive for her murder. Police have declined to comment on this possible link, but Sharp's friends and family would later confirm that she had been an on-again, off-again user for many years. Additional information which was uncovered soon led authorities back to the crime scene itself and the former 76 truck stop on I-64. Witnesses told police that when Linda was last seen, she was in the company of two men who have never been identified. The first of these men was identified as a white male in his mid-twenties with a rough and unkempt appearance. The man was additionally described as being very dirty, weighing between 230 and 260 pounds, and standing approximately 6 feet 4 inches tall with stringy, shoulder-length, light brown hair, long sideburns, a high receding hairline, and a large gut. The suspect was wearing a small Harley-Davidson cap, and on his right arm sported a tattoo of a nude woman with a snake wrapped around her body. The other suspect was described as generally smaller and neater than his companion, both in terms of grooming and dress. He stood between 5 feet 9 and 5 feet 11 inches tall, with short, wavy brown hair and a stocky build. The smaller of the two men also appeared to be in his mid-twenties. Please look closely. The likenesses shown here were created with what is known as an identikit and were circulated to other police agencies by the West Virginia State Police. To the best of our knowledge, they are being presented here publicly for the first time. According to the Putnam County Sheriff's Department, a suspect in Sharp's murder was eventually developed. As is often the case, we cannot, for legal reasons, reveal the person's name. The suspect may have once been a tavern owner in Kanawha and Putnam County, but authorities are unable to comment on the exact nature of the suspect's alleged connection to the killing. This individual spoke with police, but soon retained legal counsel. It should be stressed that this unnamed person has never been formally charged with the murder of Linda Sharp. At this juncture, the Putnam County Sheriff's Department is only able to confirm that the unnamed individual is or was a person of interest in Sharp's murder. Former investigators, as well as others close to Sharp and not so tightly bound by legalities, have been less restrained in expressing their convictions. Using mostly rumor and conjecture, they have formulated a scenario wherein Sharp was to meet with one or more persons at the Union 76 auto truck stop 
in order to settle a $1,500 drug debt. The debt was, allegedly, settled with a pistol as opposed to money. Linda Marie Sharp was laid to rest in Tyler Mountain Memory Gardens on Tuesday, March 25, 1986. Her husband Johnny was granted a prison furlough in order to attend her funeral. There was no visitation. Linda's parents, Virginia and Edward Sharp, are also interned at Tyler Mountain. At the very least, mother, father, and daughter are once again together. Authorities feel it is likely that Sharp was killed at or very near the exit off-ramp where her body was found. Uh, supporting the theory that Sharp's murder was personal and not random, there were no signs that she had been robbed, molested, or sexually assaulted in any way. Instead, her murder bore all the hallmarks of that most contemptible type of murder, execution in the coldest of blood. Linda Sharp was last seen alive at the former Union 76 auto truck stop at approximately 2 a.m. on Thursday, March 20, 1986. She may have been taken from the truck stop by two unidentified males, possibly in either a red 1974 Cadillac or a 1985 auto car double cab tractor. Linda was dressed in blue jeans, a black and white baseball jersey, and blue moccasins at the time. Her body was later found over an embankment along the St. Albans exit ramp about five miles away. She had been shot twice with a 44 caliber handgun. Police believe that Sharp's murder was likely drug-related. The two men at the truck stop are described as white males in their mid-twenties. One was heavy set and slovenly with shoulder-length hair, a Harley Davidson cap, and a tattoo of a nude woman and serpent on his right arm. His companion was described as thinner with an overall cleaner appearance in both person and clothing. Both men were later seen walking along the St. Albans exit ramp leading from I-64 to what was then U.S. Route 35. Linda Sharp's body would be found less than 85 feet away from this same location a few hours later. Authorities believe that these two men may have been hired guns and directly responsible for Sharp's death at the behest of an individual or individuals unknown. These two men may have also stolen the aforementioned 1985 auto car tractor from an undisclosed location approximately 10 to 15 miles away from the murder scene. Neither the 1974 Cadillac nor the 1985 auto car were ever located. If you have any information concerning the murder of Linda Sharp or the theft of the 1985 auto car tractor, please contact Lieutenant Lisa Arthur with the Putnam County Sheriff's Department at 304-586-0256 or the Winfield Detachment of the West Virginia State Police at 304-586-2000.